Okay, so you've had a bulging disc in the past or you currently have one now and you're under the assumption that that is going to be with, with you for the rest of your days. In this video, I'm going to help crush the medical myths associated with disc herniations. Hey friends, it's Michael with Total Physical Therapy and today I'm exploring the evidence around these concepts and the notion that disc bulges are there for the remainder of your days. So before we get into this, let's talk a little bit more about the basic anatomy of what a disc really is. So in the diagram behind me, what you're going to see is you're going to see an oversimplified demonstration of what the bones of the spine look like from a side view. So in this case, these white spaces are representative of the bones of the spine, while the uh, red indicated areas between those adjacent bones are indeed the vertebral discs. Now if we take a section of one of those discs out, turn it up on its side and stare at it from the top down in a bird's eye view, we're going to have something that looks similar to this. Now let's talk first about what the disc is providing for the human body. The discs are there for two predominant reasons. Number one, they're there to provide space. They act as spacers between two adjacent bones so those bones do not collapse towards one another. The second thing that they do is they act as shock absorbers. Much like the shocks on our vehicles, they are there to be compressed but then reabsorb their original height. Now in normal cases in healthy discs, we're going to have a relationship of these discs where they're all pretty much adequately equally gapped and they're contained within the boundaries of the bones of the spine. These are in normal situations. Again, in a normal situation, looking at the disc from a bird's eye view, you're going to have two main layers. You're going to have an outer layer called an annular layer. That's indicated on that uh, diagram by the red coloring. The blue coloring on the inner aspect of that disc is the nucleus. So in that relationship of shock absorbing, we've got those red layers that absorb a lot of that shock and reabsorb to their uh, original height. But we also have that hard inner core, that nucleus, which is going to be the gate and uh, the gatekeeper per se of keeping those bones from collapsing towards one another. All right, so that's some basic anatomy. What happens in a pathological or in an abnormal state? Well, a couple things can happen. Number one, these red layers can become frayed or they can become unstable and they can simply protrude beyond the boundaries of where they should be contained. And or we can get a combination of things where this hard inner core starts to work its way into the areas of that annulus. Now as those areas of the annulus become uh, compressed and pressed against by the nucleus, we can start to get slight bulges. Now those slight bulges can become, uh, those slight bulges can be asymptomatic. You can walk around for days, weeks, uh, or arguably for years without experiencing any type of symptoms from that. So just because you've been told that you have a bulge does not necessarily mean that it's a death sentence. Um, you can be asymptomatic and in fact the literature proves to us that about two-thirds of individuals over the age of 50 um, have signs of something like this but they are asymptomatic. As we get older that percentage of individuals with degenerative changes of the spine actually uh, exponentially rises and yet the percentage of people with persistent symptoms does not. So the take home message from that is the fact that even though as we age our susceptibility to degenerative changes of the spine increases but the likelihood of our back pain does not increase proportionally speaking. So give it a thumbs up by um, being satisfied that even despite the fact that things like this can and will happen in our lifetime, it does not guarantee that we're going to have symptoms. Okay, so back to uh, the diagram here. If the nucleus continues to push further and further out towards those outer layers of the disc, the annular layer layers will continue to protrude further and further out 
and they can even fragment off in places. That's not a good thing. We're trying to avoid that. Where is this happening? Well, it can happen in a number of places, but predominantly it's typically happening back in these areas right here. Okay. So as disc material continues to be pressed into areas where it's not uh, welcomed, we can have a number of symptoms that pop up. Now, even in the presence of something like this, what is to occur here? Some people would suggest that that stays the way uh, that it is and we're just going to have to live with it. You don't have to answer the question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! But the reality is, is that we have evidence to suggest that that is completely false. And indeed it is. Okay, there have been a presumption all the way back since the 1940s that the, the body has an ability to spontaneously reabsorb this disc material. But it was not until the 1990s that we had the first recorded incidents observed through uh, MRI and CT scans. So those types of images, for those unfamiliar with an MRI and CT scans, these are the images that give us the best opportunity to look at these structures. Um, there have been methods in the past that didn't get quite give us the same clarity. But it was in the 90s that uh, we had that first recorded incidence of seeing spontaneous reabsorption of this material. Now, the studies that show that are a little bit limited, but why are they limited? Well, they're limited because typically uh, MRIs and CT scans, those are reimbursed based off of symptoms. And so if we have individuals that have uh, become asymptomatic, there's not really justification for those repeat uh, image studies. And so that makes it a little bit challenging to come about uh, and see more confirmed uh, imaging studies regarding this idea and this notion. But in this video, I'm going to take you to 2017 with Zhang and colleagues. They actually looked at a quarter century of data uh, through the medical literature. And what they found is that there was an overall incidence of 67% disc reabsorption cases. So in plain English, of all of these uh, studies that they looked at over the quarter century in uh, Asia and Europe, they found that two-thirds of individuals conservatively reabsorb these disc materials, proving and confirming that conservative care can work even in the presence of conditions like this. Say it ain't so. Sir, we have a situation here. We certainly do. So, let's get a thumbs up and some comments based on the idea and the proof. The proof is in the pudding that these discs can and do reabsorb. They are not a death sentence and we will, if given the right environment, reabsorb this disc material. Okay, so how do you do that? That's for another video to go into depth of some of these ideas, but let's talk about the basic principles. Principle number one, sleep. You need adequate sleep. You steal sleep from your body. You, you are stealing healing capacity from your body. Idea number two, nutrition. Junk in, junk out. If we continue to feed our bodies with unhealthy food, you're going to reap the consequences of doing such and it's going to steal healing capacity from your body. Number three, frequent and meaningful exercise. Lay around all day, sit around all day, stress has become even greater to areas of the spine. Number four, hydration. What is the main composition of these structures? It's water. If we steal water from the body, a lot of things go south. This is going to be one of the first things that suffer. So if over 85% of your discs are made of water, then do your body some justice and make sure we are hydrating, not obsessively, but consistently throughout the day. Hope you found these facts beneficial. We've crushed the medical myth that discs cannot reabsorb. The truth is they can reabsorb, they do reabsorb, they will continue to do so moving forward. Proof is in the pudding, your back and your neck pain, including herniated discs, do get better. Thanks for everybody for watching in this video. Share, comment down below, let me know what other myths you want crushed. Thanks everybody for joining on, we'll talk to you soon.